can you just tell us a little bit about this new show? Sure. The Education We Didn't Have is going to be my third solo theatre show, uh, obviously with comedy characters as well. And um, it's about it's about an out-of-work performer who is approaching a milestone birthday and gives up and thinks, OK, I'm going to try on normal choices and happiness, but ends up in a clowning retreat. When you do write, particularly for yourself to perform, you do write with your own memories or things that you've been exploring. The reason I called it the education we didn't have is I don't know about you, but the things that I was taught at school, things like Oxbow Lakes and, you know, random things and quadratic equations, they weren't that useful for me in my life. I would have liked perhaps things all about communication and relationships and financial planning, how to do pensions. And, you know, the country wouldn't be in the state that it's in if we had had a better education. I think due to lockdown, it was realised that most households and individuals are one paycheck away from bankruptcy. You know, we don't, we haven't been taught how to look after ourselves financially, emotionally, creatively. And I think the curriculum of many schools is one of the things that hasn't changed in so long Uh, and I think it really needs to and I was talking about creativity and how the world doesn't seem to be set up for creatives and I don't know what's happening with um, government helping uh, Australian artists but over here a lot of us have fallen through the cracks because they've helped people who are self-employed who have done more than 50% of their work, you know, self-employed. But due to the portfolio nature of how we all work as performers, some of us will have a day job and that's PAYE. And if that's over 50%, we've got nothing. Yes, they've just done a huge announcement of 1.7 billion investment, but we don't know how that's coming down. Is that going to organisations or or individuals? Tourists alone would bring in two billion to London theatre. So um, I think it's 13 million to the UK economy that the UK creative industries created. Um, I mean, arts and culture, 10.8 billion. So the arts and culture um, economy is growing faster in the UK than the general economy. Are you, Katie, getting any assistance from the government as an artist? Yes, uh, we have something called universal credit here, which is bare minimum of, um, you know, it doesn't cover bills, but it certainly helps towards them. Um, And I was just, I've, I've been able to keep going because I was very lucky to get a couple of campaigns one was for Cabri Heroes and one was for Clarins um, and I've just been really lucky that um, that money has kept me going and obviously I've I've not been going anywhere so it's just been the bills and the groceries that um, that I've had to cover however they have just announced that theatres will be opening um, in August however in order for you to be a socially distant audience you have to be only 30% to 40% full well, most productions need to be 70% full in order to be commercially viable. So it doesn't work, the no. plans. So everyone's wanting to hear the date that, you know, they they can, stage five, they call it, when, when we can then have normal audiences because there's no point running a, um, a show with 30%, although it would be amazing. And also, <laughs> you know, you've got to look at your scripts because in so many scripts, there's the actors have to be more than one meter, to, you know, they, they need to be close. So it, it's just, it's not really, it's not really working. So to be honest, society seems to be broken. It doesn't seem to be fit for purpose anymore. And I think a lot of us, what with, I mean, you switch on the news now and it's almost like you're watching a film, you know, what with obviously the pandemic and the influence on mass unemployment and it's just carnage out there the world is not coming together the the old things of competition between states no one's really trying to you know come together and find a vaccine it's all just competition and backbiting it's just broken 
And I think a lot of us feel that way. So I was, I was exploring that. I peek behind the curtain for a clue to existence. The why, the what, the story after this distance. Society is collapsing and people are breaking. Souls are at bus stops. But it's not their fault. It's in their making. The system we live in, not designed for truth, for the creative, this generation to save the future, for the human spirit to manoeuvre. But the artist enters the void with nothing and comes back with something, you. Something the robot can never do. But no, it's all capture it, imprison it, make it work, make it earn, make it mine. What can I learn to sell? It's hell. Oh well, make it numb, make it crumble, until we break, sue. But who? <laughs> Will this be known as the Chinese flu? There comes a time when we believe everything is finished. Life as we know it is totally diminished. That's the beginning for a clown. You're in crisis? Good. Let's begin like all superheroes would. This might sound stupid, and I sound all preach. But someone did ask for a birthday speech. It must change. I mean, I know that they were trying to make story time compulsory, opening up people to their own creativity, whatever that might be. We're facing two big things after, after we get over this pandemic, please God. We're facing the future of um, automation, and we're facing um, planetary decline, sharply. And in something like 15 years, 98% of all accountants are going to be automated. There's going to be such another wave of mass unemployment. People that um, do administration in all sorts of industries are going to lose their jobs. Some people have spent their lives um, dedicating it to accountancy, law, or they're not just going to lose their job, they're going to lose their purpose. They need to be uh, creating a new education for the people who are coming through the next generations who are at school now. And they need to be inspiring and upskilling the current workforce because we're going to be facing real trouble if we aren't already. I mean, the mass unemployment that's going to be after the pandemic is astronomic. People are going to want to cut costs and that age of automation could come quicker. And hiring a person might be more expensive than hiring a robot. The curriculum is therefore so important because people need to be thinking about different sorts. Not that our education system really was vocational anyway. Um, but it really needs to be thinking about entrepreneurship, creativity, and I don't just mean creativity as in, in art forms or performing arts, but creative solutions about things where people can design a better town or village or um, so that we are more of a community base. And I just think that the education system needs to drastically change fast. Otherwise, it's just we're going to be in more trouble than we already are.